Well, my story, my business story started uh, when after, after graduating from university in Canada as an engineer, uh, I couldn't get a job as an engineer. So I had three offers, non-engineering -engineer, job offers. The first was to become a long haul truck driver. The second was to become uh, a soap salesman. And the third was to sell mutual funds. I didn't even know what a mutual fund was back in 1977. But I thought, that's close to uh, uh, wealth, so I want to be there. And being an immigrant in Canada at 26, I knew no one with money. So I had to knock on doors at a cold call. And when someone would say to me, Mike, we'll see you. Come and talk to me at home. When I got to their home, I felt such a debt of, debt of gratitude that someone would really want to hear what I have to say. I, I said to myself, Mike, what's the highest value add I can give to this family here tonight? And the answer kept coming back to me, make them wealthy. What I did, when I, I'm being an engineer, I have a process that I go through whenever there's an, a, a, an issue that I'd like to solve. The process goes like this, I observe. From my observations, I create a hypothesis. Then I stress test the hypothesis. If it holds true, I codify it. And then I hardwire it and live it. That then it, it influences my behavior. So then I can practice it consistently and eventually get the compounding effect. So I observed through that process, I codified what I now call the five laws of wealth creation. Number one, they own a few, not too many, high quality businesses. Number two, they make sure they really understand them. Number three, they make sure they're in strong long-term growth industries. Number four, they make sure they use other people's money prudently. And lastly, their attitude towards ownership is I'll hold these businesses for as long as they remain high quality and the industry within which they're domiciled is in a strong long-term growth mode. But I'll start off by saying my own ethos is defined by what we have codified in a Latin, uh, uh, a, a lat uh, in Latin, it's, it's prosperitas cum caritate, prosperity with care or doing well by doing good. So you see, it doesn't make sense being successful in a sea of poverty. You have to uplift others because it's the uplifting of others that will enable your business to be long-term, intergenerationally sustainable. Philanthropy is most important because it is what makes you feel fulfilled. You know, this lady, Indra Nui, she, as she's an Indian lady. She went, emigrated to America and became the CEO of Pepsi-Cola, Indra Nui. And she was being awarded, uh, she was being given an award. And she was making, she made a speech. They said, how did you do it? What drives you? She said, ever since I was a child, I was always curious. I would ask myself, why do, some days there's sunshine, other days no sunshine. Some days warm, next day not warm. Why do birds fly at, some birds fly at one height, others fly at another? Why, 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 why? I was always curious. So my curiosity led me to become a continuous student. That's who I am. That's number one. Secondly, whatever I do, I do it with my head, my heart, and my hands. I think about it. I am passionate about it. I emote I'm passionate and I do, I execute. And thirdly, I, whatever I do, I try to uplift others.